ever since. I was, I was on the way. I said, oh, Lord, I done left my road. I ain't got the right shoes on. My shirt ain't tucked in. They ain't going to let me in. But then I realized I'm on the way to whole Jerusalem. Then my people, then my people, they understand. I came to do work. I ain't coming to be free. I ain't coming to be free. They dressed up, they look good, they like they smell good. Grandma say you just a dressed up, smelling good devil. Why well, I trying to tell you, I came here to be with the saints. Amen. Pray. I got happy when I seen a brother came in. He fresh, he fly, he look good. I said, that's what I'm talking about. Right? I said, look, I came, I came for purpose. I got need in my life. You know, a lot of folk will throw on a suit and they the biggest devil. Uh, the brother, I'm, just trying to dig. I just, I'm just trying to dig what God got for me. I don't need, I don't need nobody looking at me. I don't need to be no nobody taking pictures. I ain't come here for all of that. I came here to dig what God has for me. Amen. 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 Like I got some sense. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for inviting us from abundance life to ministry. Oh, God's stone on that like I'm a real preacher. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the state troopers not being on their job. We were burning rubber. Trying to get here. Praise God. Amen. We made this safely. Amen. My wife said, What is you doing? I said, I got to get there. I'm trying to get there. Amen. 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 Y'all pray our prayers. Thank you so much. We we bring you greetings from abundant life, but you know we don't do a, the the uh, friends and family protocol because we you know we members. We just we just don't be here or something. We members. I got a t-shirt and everything. I'm, I'm a member. I joined last year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, you know, God. A year ago. Yeah, a year ago. I been, I been, I, I joined the old building. I, you know, I'm a member. I'm a member. So we don't do no business protocol. You know, we, we family. So we cut up, we act the fool, and we gonna praise God. Amen. 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 Then they, they messed around and told me it was you, son. You done messed up now. <laughs> That's my element right there. You know, when the when the when the older generation means you have to be on my best behavior, you can go. I can keep it all the way real. You know, it's, I, I keep, they say 100. I keep it 1,000 when the youth is here. I can do it like I want to do. Amen. Amen. But thank you so much for inviting us. If you have your Bibles, we are in John, St. John, the fourth chapter. St. John, the fourth chapter. St. John 4. And we're going to start off at verse 24. St. John, fourth chapter, excuse me, verse 23. Verse 23. St. John, fourth chapter, verse 23. When you have it, say amen. 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 You still look and say, hold up, preacher. Hold on. You're moving too fast. Slow down. I know you're excited. I know you love the Lord, but you slow down. Man, still hear pages turning. We're in St. John, fourth chapter, starting at verse 23. I like this already. Come on here. I like it. St. John 4, verse 23. Everybody else say amen. 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 All right. St. John 4, chapter, verse 23 says it like this. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit I and in truth. You. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is a spirit. And his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be here in the house. And we simply ask that you will come into this place and have your holy way, Father God. I pray that you remove me out of the way, Father God, that you may get the glory, Father God. Remove any distractions from this place, Father God. Help our hearts and our minds and our ears to be attentive to you, Father God. And hear from you in your holy word. In Jesus' mighty name, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, some Somebody to say amen. 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 I'm gonna talk to you very briefly this morning from the topic, the right spirit. The right, the right spirit. The right spirit. The right spirit. The scripture we just read in St. John 4th chapter, if you go on verse 24, it says that God is a spirit, 
and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you ever heard the scripture in Hebrews 11 chapter verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Slow down, preacher, wait a minute. If we were to put those two passages of scripture together, it would tell us that God is a spirit. The scripture says so. We just read it. It said that God is a spirit. What does that mean? That means that God in his form is a spirit. Which literally means that he has no earthly shape, that he has no structure to him. In fact, being a spirit, he ain't like Ghostbusters. When he's a spirit, he's actually invisible. You can't see him, you can't touch him, you can't grab him. He has no shape or form. He is a spirit. The scripture also says in Hebrews, what we just read, that now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if God be a spirit and I can't see him, how do you expect me to have faith in him? Preacher, that's not, that don't quite make sense. I can't see something, I can't have faith. And I'm glad you asked the question because a lot of us say we believe God. Yeah. Come on. But we don't see him. We, we say we believe God. We got all kinds of songs about praising and believing in God. And we do all this stuff and, 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 and trying to prove to people that we believe God. But how do you believe something you can't even see? If you look up the definition of the word faith, faith is defined as having complete trust in something. So let's keep it spiritual. Being that we in the church, we say that we have faith in God. The definition would be that we have complete trust in God. Complete trust in God. No room for wavering. It's complete trust in God. That means that I even believe in what I can't see. When I got complete trust in God, I believe in him even though I can't see him. Completely trusting in him how and why would I believe in something I can't see. Listen, if you ever done the trust exercise, where they tell you, they say, stand, put your hand across the chest, somebody's gonna stand behind you, and I want you to fall back and trust that they gonna catch you. Come on here. I don't know about you, y'all y'all been saved all y'all life, but every time they bring up the trust exercise, I'll be like this. They say, go ahead, fall back. Go ahead. Oh, see, you guys, you see I, I see you, but I'm on trust. Okay, y'all don't want to be real this morning. I, I see you, yeah, but I'm on trust. I, I know you work out. I know you're strong. You, you, you're strong enough to catch me. I see you, but I'm on trust. But I don't, I don't really trust you like that. I, I see you in church, but I don't only really trust you like, like that. I see you walk on, you speak, you always pleasant, but I don't really trust you like that. If we're just being honest. But the definition of the word faith says to have complete trust uh -huh. in God. Can't see him. Uh -huh. But I trust when I get in trouble, you know, the first thing you holler, oh Lord, help me. Because when I get in a situation when I can't do it myself, when I can't do it on my own power, even though I can't see him, I trust him. I trust him. The scripture states, in order to worship him, you must, this is the scripture, you must, that's what the scripture says. you must do it in spirit and in truth. You got to have the right spirit just to be able to worship God. You ain't catch that. You got to have the right spirit just to be able to worship, just to be able to praise, because in your natural body, in your natural mind, in your natural emotion, you can't do it. That's right. Come on. Come on. In your natural, your natural, this is natural. This is, this is natural. The flesh, the eyes, the, the mind, all of this is natural. Your earthly vessel, your earthly body, this is natural. In my natural, I can't trust him. So if I can't trust him, then according to scripture, I can't even worship him. You must do it in spirit. And in truth, because a lot of people go to church day in and day out. They sing the songs, they shout, they got all the church protocol down packed. 
But some people, if they're honest with you, they'll say, I do all that. And I don't feel nothing. Don't feel nothing. Come on. Grandma say you leave here the same way you came. You come in a devil, you leave out a devil. You come in with issues, you leave out with issues. Right. You come in struggling, you leave out struggling. All you've been doing is exercising for the last two, three hours. Right. Come in, don't get nothing, don't feel nothing. And if you look into the scripture, the scripture plan states that the spirit and the flesh are contrary one to another. What does that mean, preacher? That means that the spirit and the flesh are always at war. Yeah. Your flesh don't want nothing to do with the spirit. The spirit don't want nothing to do with the flesh. Someone said, make it plain. Make it plain, I'll tell you why. Because in my flesh, I'm sinful. In my mind, I'm sinful. My natural body, my natural self, I'm sinful. But the spirit of God is holy. And holiness and sin can't mix. They can't mingle. They can't hang out. They can't hang with everybody. They can't do the same thing. That's why I say the spirit and the flesh are contrary one to another. Remember the definition of faith. It says to have complete trust in God. But I can't do that. I cannot have complete trust in him in my natural self. The flesh naturally does not trust God. My flesh won't allow me to trust God. It won't allow. That means I want to trust him. I think about trusting, I'm trying to figure out how I can trust them, but my natural self won't allow me to. That's why people backslide. That's why people come to church, leave church, go to this church, go to another church. That's why people say they love God and they cuss you out the next minute. That's why people say I want to trust them, but my flesh won't allow me to. My flesh will always question the spirit. My flesh will question the spirit. My flesh will try to find fault in the spirit. My flesh is skeptical of the spirit. My flesh is not as easily convinced about the spirit. My flesh doubts the spirit. My flesh has reserves about the spirit. That's people. That's how we do one another. We look at each other day in and day out. And look you straight in your face and say, I love you and talk about you the next second. Come on here. Come in and we hug and we kick. You know, if you work a job, you, you smile in my face all the time trying to take it. Okay, now keep it spirit, y'all. Y'all too young today, y'all know that song. But we smiling, we giggling, we grinning, we shaking hands, we hugging, and we don't even really like these folk. That's how we do people, that's how people do each other. That's the flesh. The flesh, the natural you, is the same way towards God. Oh, I love you, God. Oh, I worship. I praise you, God. But the first opportunity you get to do something outside of the spirit, outside of the will of God, your flesh will take every opportunity. Scripture states the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I want to do what the spirit say do. I want to do right what God say do, but my flesh keep getting in the way. The flesh is skeptic about God. Make you question him. Is he real? Will he do what he said he's going to do? Can he do what he said he's going to do? Yeah. The flesh is skeptical of God. So should I trust him or should I not? Should I love God? Yes, no, maybe. Check one. Because my flesh is questioning the spirit. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says like this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Wait a minute, what was the definition of faith? To have complete trust in God. Let me replace that. So, without complete trust in him, it's impossible to please him. I think it's safe to say that without the right spirit, without the Holy Spirit, without God's spirit, you can't even worship God. Yeah. You can lift your hands, you can sing the songs, you can dance, you can do all this stuff, but you got a question that you got to ask the question, am I doing it or is the spirit doing it? Is this me or is this the spirit? Because if it's the spirit doing it, then that means you're actually worshiping God. But if you're doing it, all you're doing is exercise. 
You can jazzercise, you're doing typo, you're doing all the, you, you got all the church moves, you got all the protocol, you got all the shout moves out. All you're doing is working out. Leave your legs burning back hurt. You tired, you hungry, you sweaty, you musty, and you ain't got nothing from God. And then folks want to know why I go out here and it seems like the devil coming to get the devil ain't coming against you. You ain't never got out of your own way to allow God to work on your situation. I like that. Without the Spirit of God, you can't do nothing. Without the Spirit of God, He will not accept your request. Grandma said, Your prayers ain't going no higher than the ceiling. <laughs> and then we wonder why people lose interest in church. Because they got all the physical motions down, and they assuming that this will work. If I run around the church seven times, if I shout, if I log in the flow, somebody lay hands on me, if they touch me, I'm just going to fall. I didn't really feel that. I'm just going to fall down. We got all the physical stuff down. But we don't get no response from God. When God does a response, they try to say, God ain't real. No, no, no. Your worship ain't real. God can't respond unless he responded to the spirit. God can't respond to your flesh. God can't respond to your talent. God can't respond to your skill. God can't respond to how you affect yourself in the talking in tongues. Yeah, no way like you ain't never heard of that coming in a hundred Toyotas in Cadillac. You you making up stuff on the spot. What did you say? You ain't saying nothing. Ain't no power behind it. Ain't no deliverance behind it. Ain't nobody getting set free behind it. And then you run. Oh my God. I like that. Wonder why ain't nothing changed in your life. I prayed for so and so, but they, they just wouldn't go down. They just wouldn't fall out. Ain't no power behind it. Talk, you talking loud, spitting all in full face. Your breath don't smell like nothing. And you wonder why. I got no. Okay. The scriptures say Psalms 34, verse 17. The Lord hears his people, and when they call to him for help, he rescues them from all their troubles. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. I have to question these folks that's always in trouble. Always. always going through something. Always got an issue. Always. And the, the devil is mad at me. The devil is doing this. I, I got to question these folks. Because at some point, the scripture states that the Lord shows up for his people. Yeah. When they call for help, he rescues them from all their troubles. Because God is a spirit. He can only respond to the spirit, his spirit, the Holy Spirit. Any other spirit is like a foreign language to him. He don't speak it, what you're trying to tell him. He don't understand it, therefore he can't move. The spirit and the flesh are contrary one to another. So when you're asking God out of your flesh, he don't respond because he don't understand it. If it ain't from the spirit, if it ain't holy, if it ain't pure, if it ain't strictly from him and his holy ghost, I can't respond. Right, right, right. He can't heal you. He can't touch your situation. He can't pull you out of nothing. Because I don't understand what you're saying to me. I'm a holy God. Therefore, the spirit and what you ask me must come from my spirit and must be lined up with my holiness. That's why a lot of prayers don't get answered. The scripture states in John 4, back in verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Come on! You know, if you got a car, every now and again, you got to check the oil. Yeah. You got to check the transmission fluid, you got to check the windshield wiper fluid. Every now and then, you got to put some gas in, or you're going to crank it up and you ain't going nowhere. Right. Every now and then, you got to check up on the vehicle to make sure that it has what it needs to run and function properly. Right. Every now and then, you got to check up on the spirit. Come on. Not for somebody else. I'm talking about for you. For you. Every now and then, you got to check your own flesh. Every now and then, you got to check your own spirit. Every now and then, you got to check your own oil. Because you don't just go out here in the parking lot and start checking other people. 
Because you ain't got access to the car. You ain't, hear me. you ain't got access to the vehicle. But I got access to what God has put in me. So every now and then, I got to check my own oil. I got to check my own fluid and make sure that I got the Holy Ghost and not some other kind of good word. Good word. Every now and then, you got to check yourself. I want to be sure that I'm in the right spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. His spirit. God's spirit. Because without God's spirit, the right spirit, your prayers are no good. Without the right spirit, your praise can't bring you out of nothing. Without the right spirit, your worship can't deliver you. Without the right spirit, your dance can't lose the shackles. Without the right spirit, your witness is ineffective. Without the right spirit, the Holy Ghost, His spirit, you can't fight off other spirits. So I do understand that there are other spirits. Every spirit ain't from God. Only one, only the Holy Ghost is His spirit. So now, if you don't have His spirit, the Holy Spirit, the right spirit, you can't fight off lust. You can't fight off gossip, and you can't fight off lying and fornicating. You can't fight off addiction. You can't fight off pride. You can't fight off depression. You can't fight off evil and corrupt spirits. Yes, Man got mad at me because he said, you know, I'm trying to live right, but I can't put this bottle down because you ain't got the right spirit. <laughs> you can't fight off an ABC spirit if you ain't got the Holy Spirit. You ain't catching this. But a lot of people will get mad at you when you try to correct them, when you try to tell them that you have to be in the will of God in order to receive something from God. Because a lot of people feel like I'm in the will of God if I just go to church. I'm in the will of God if I just watch church on TV. I'm in the will of God if I listen to gospel music every now and then. But see, it takes more than that. At some point, you got to deny your flesh. At some point, you got to get out of yourself. At some point, you got to surrender and allow God to take control of your life. Hey, fight off false doctrine if I ain't got the Holy Spirit. Because they got some preachers out here. They sound real good. They can dress it up. They, mm, God. And you'll be like, yeah, preach, preach. And you don't even know what he said. He can be speaking devil over your life. He can be telling you something contrary to the word of God. But because he sound good, because he got charisma, because he look good in the suit, or because he got a thousand people in his church, folk will flock to him and they ain't ready to work for themselves. So you ain't got the right spirit to know how to fight on his false doctrine. The scripture states, try the spirit and see whether it is of God because there are many false prophets in the world. If you don't know the scripture, how you gonna fight off false scripture? They got these, these things now where they say it, it's all about love. It's just love. God loves everybody. So I can be in my sin. I can do whatever I want to do and God still loves me. That is not what scripture states. Anytime you read scripture and somebody had an encounter with God, that was a change that took place. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. The word repent literally means to turn from sin and never return. So how can you be in the will of God and you actively live in sin? The spirit and the flesh are contrary one to another. I can't be in sin and claim to have the spirit of God inside of me. He can't dwell in an unclean temple. Without the right spirit, you can't do nothing for God. You can't do nothing in his name. You can't bring glory to him. You can't do nothing for the kingdom. You can't do nothing for his people. You can't bring honor to him. And here's the big thing. You can't lead nobody to him. Without the right spirit, you can't lead nobody to Christ. In fact, if you're not led by the spirit, all your efforts won't lead people to Christ, but they'll turn people away from you. How many of y'all done heard? Oh, I don't do church. That's why I don't go to church. That's why I don't like church. Everybody a hypocrite. Everybody doing this and everybody doing that. How many times have you heard that? Because people don't have the right spirit and they turn folk away from God. And then we wonder why the church attendance is going down. God bless you, bro. And we wonder why people got talent, but they ain't got no spirit. Come on! They got skills, but they ain't got no spirit. Amen. 
The world tell you that you can fake it till you make it. Well, you can do that in the world. But you mess around and come in God's house trying to fake it. You're going to mess around and get a hold of something. And something, or even something going to get a hold of you. Keep on trying to fake it till you make it. Grandma said that's a thing called transferring to your spirit. You think you got power to try to cast some out of somebody and they jump on you. Now you taking the spirits home and trying to figure out why these kids don't want to act right. Trying to figure out why I on my job don't want to act right. Trying to figure out why I can't sleep at night. Trying to figure out why I got aches and pains in my body. You don't mess around and get some jump on you and you ain't got no power to cast it out. Trying to fake it. But the spirit of God will expose some stuff. Trying to fake it. But the spirit of God will expose some stuff. Read the scripture. They said, Paul we know. Jesus we know. But who is you? You say you came in his name. You say you got power like him. But we see evidence through them. We don't see no evidence in you. The spirit will expose some stuff. If the wrong spirit overtakes you, you in trouble, trouble, trouble. It ain't easy to get a spirit out of you. Oh, but it's easy to grab hope to the Holy Ghost. But when, when these other spirits get on you and you ain't got no power, you ain't got no authority, you ain't got the ability to cast it out, you better hope you know somebody. And you can't always get a hold of the pastor. You can't always get a hold of the deacon. You can't always get a hold of somebody else. You better mess around and get some Holy Ghost for yourself. So when you in your bedroom in the midnight hour, when you cry on your pillow with tears, when you got aches and pains in your body, you better have some power and know how to cast some stuff out. You got to have the right spirit. You got to have the right spirit, the Holy Ghost. You got to have the spirit of God. So now, you've been charged. You heard the word. You know what you got. You know what you got to get. You know what you got to do. So now, we got to search ourselves. We got to do an oil check on us to see what spirit we got in us. A lot of folks don't want to be don't want to be personal. You don't like people all in your business. But sometimes you just got to repent and say, Lord, this this, this ain't you. Sometimes you got to surrender all over again. Yes, That's why when we do altar call, we do salvation, yes, and then we do rededication. Yes, I already been through salvation, but I messed up. I done fell back into the way of the world. So now I need rededication. I need to come on back. Amen. I got to come back like the father did for the prodigal son. Yeah, yeah. You got to come on back home. But the awesome thing about the whole story is that when the son was on his way, that he didn't make it to the house yet. He, didn't make. he was on his way. When the father saw him from afar, the scriptures say, he didn't walk to him, he, he ran. ran. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He ran to go get his son, and the scriptures say he hugged his neck, he told his servant, he said, go get his robe. Go get my ring. He said, he came back home, give him his rightful place. God is waiting on you. To come back home. You say, but I'm already here. I'm sitting right here in the church. But maybe you don't have the right spirit. Yes, sir. So when you get the right spirit, God will do an expedient turnaround. Come on. The dad said, I can't wait until he get to the porch. I can't wait until he get into the house. I'm going out to read him. It was a quick turnaround. It was a fast turnaround. It was a change that took place immediately. When you get the right spirit, this stuff that's been that's been hounding you and, and, and bothering you for years, get turned around in an instant. Get turned around quickly. Get turned around quick, fast, and hurt. When you get the right spirit, when you get God's spirit, when you get his holy spirit. There's several passages of scripture. Well, God restored the time. You heard the story of Job lost everything he had. But the scripture says that when he, when he got right, it said he gave no for everything that he lost. He'll turn around. And that's what we talk about the blessing. That's, that's what we talk about the blessing. Because when you get the right spirit, you get not only what you've been asking for, not only what you need, but you get it pressed down, shaking together, running over. That's when you get the overflow. 
That's when you get everything that God wants you to have. Because in our natural flesh, in our mind, a lot of us say, I just want a million dollars. Well, what if God want to do more than a million dollars? Ain't nobody finna turn them down. Ain't nobody finna turn out more than a million dollars. Because in our mind, in our flesh, we got an idea of what we want. But God already has a plan and a purpose that he want to give you more. But it starts with the right spirit. Some of us say, I just want to be healed. I just don't want to deal with this sickness no more. I just don't want to deal with this. But God's saying, I got bigger and better plans for you. He told, he told Mary, they said, if you had been here, Jesus, our brother Lazarus would have died. Jesus looked at Mary and said, it was for God's glory that I wasn't here. Yes, so that when I bring him out, you know that you didn't do it, that no man did it. You know that God did it. Some of us going through simply because God want to get the glory. That's why you got to hold on. That's why we start off. Say God is still working miracles. You just got to hold on. He's put you in position. But you got to have the right spirit in order to receive anything that he has. This is awesome. Amen. I'm done. I ain't got no more notes. I'm done. Praise God. So at this time, this is your opportunity. We done went through the scripture. We done talked about it. And maybe God is speaking to you. Maybe God is saying to you, you got the right idea, but you don't got the right spirit. You got some spirits that you need to let go, but you can't do it on your own. You got to do it through my spirit. You got to have the Holy Spirit. You got to have God's spirit. So this is your opportunity. This is the time now where you can totally surrender, where you can turn it over to God. But you can say, Lord, I done messed up. Lord, I done did this. I done did that. You can run down the list. All he's concerned about is do you have his spirit? Yeah, yeah. And when you have his spirit, that's when he can begin to work. That's when he can begin to turn stuff around. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. when he can begin to deliver us. That's when he can begin the healing process. That's, that's when he can begin to be God in your life. But he can't do it without the spirit. Thank you. 